Hey guys, Personal Defense, and this is going to be a, another Frequent Asked Questions video slash um, Firearms Basics video, and uh, today I'm going to talk about grip, grip on a pistol and grip on a revolver. All right, so let me start out by saying I am in, by no means an expert. I am not suggesting that this is the way you need to grip and fire your pistol or revolver. Um, I'm not saying this is the right way. I am by no means trying to tell you what to do or how to do it. I am just saying this is how I learned, and I hope that this can give, uh, this might be some tips to some people who are wondering how they can get a good positive grip on, on their gun or... or Maybe you don't know how to grip the gun, and this might give you a good uh, starting point on how to do so. Now with a revolver or a uh, double action style semi-automatic pistol like the Beretta 92FS, the, the grip is going to be slightly different, and the, uh, the trigger pull is going to be a lot different. Let me start with the 92FS since it's a semi-auto, and like I showed you earlier, it's empty. So, um, when the hammer's down here and the safety's off, it's going to be a nice, or a big, long, double action pull. Since this is a semi-auto, you know, we got the same grip here, up real high on the pistol, as high as we can possibly get. You know, these are the same basic grip fundamentals that I was talking about for a semi-automatic pistol. None of the frames showing, left offhand thumb is forward, matching up with the, your trigger finger. But what you want to do with the double action pull is you actually want to get that trigger in this crease, this first knuckle here. So when you pull it, you can see where it is in my hand. It's in that crease. And what you want to do is you don't want to you don't want to grip it back like that, make like a rounded move. What you want to do is get it in that knuckle, and you kind of want to start to do like that, then kind of pull straight back like that. And it's hard to demonstrate with this this uh, screwdriver. So what I'm doing is rather than pulling, you know, together to make a round, you know, like a, if I was doing that, that's not what I'm doing with the trigger pull. What I'm doing is pulling it slightly to there, so I get a nice good grip on it. And then I'm just kind of pull, pulling with this part of my finger rather than curling this around. I'm pulling with this part of my finger kind of back straight. I know you can't tell right here the way I'm doing it, but the trigger pull is on this. It's not you pulling with the tip towards your thumb, like making a round. That's not the way to do it. What you're doing is in the crease here, and you you get it around so that you make almost a 90 degree angle, and then you just pull straight back. Let me see if I can show you on this revolver here. So see what I'm doing is I'm just slightly pulling back and then it's kind of a, this finger doesn't go around, it almost sticks out straight. So I'm, I'm getting it around like that on that knuckle and then just pulling straight back like that. And that's very important. When you have a double action pull, it's very important. You want to keep those sights with double action. When you pull the trigger double action style, you want to make it so the sights don't move. If you can see there, the way I'm pulling it, the sights aren't moving at all. Same with this thing. I'm holding it here, and I've got I've got that trigger in the first uh, knuckle there. These sights are a little bit easier to see. So watch the sights. It's just a straight back pull. You can see the sights are not moving at all. And if you practice this, you'll actually get really good where you can pull the trigger where the sights don't move. I mean, most people when they start with a double action, you know, they're you see here, the front sight will kind of bounce around like that. When you practice it, you'll make it so you can pull the trigger fast and the sights won't actually move. And like I said, you're just pulling on that knuckle and almost straight back. It's hard to explain without you 
actually, you know, if you have a revolver around or a double action um, semi-automatic pistol, you know, get it right now and, and see if you can understand what I'm talking about. It's not a pull like this, like you're squeezing. It's a pull on that knuckle straight back. And like I said, practice. Practice looking at that front sight when you do the trigger pull and you want to make sure that it doesn't ever move. And that's going to help you be more accurate uh, shooting you know, double action. It's hard to shoot a revolver double action. It takes a lot of practice. But if you practice that kind of grip, for me that really helped me um, shooting revolvers in double action. And when you get a double action only revolver, you know, like an LCR or a Smith & Wesson, one of those, the little lightweight revolvers, those are hard to shoot accurately because they're so small and it's a double action pull. And double action pulls are generally, you know, 10 pounds plus. So uh, practice that and that should help you be more accurate with a double action pull. All right, so let's talk about grip on a revolver. Um, it's not that different from a grip on a semi-automatic pistol but as you can see here I have three different styles of grips on a revolver and most likely when you get a hold of a revolver it's gonna have some wooden style grips like this unless it's somewhat of a newer revolver then it's probably gonna have you know a grip like this or a grip like this uh, let's talk about this model 10 first this is kind of a hard grip to use because it is so small, as you can see here, it just, it has the uh, back strap exposed and the front strap, and you can see it's very very small here. You know, it's it's that big compared to like, even though this is a bigger revolver compared to the Taurus here, it's just like the size of that little insert looking thing. And uh, this is the the uh, Model 10 is the same frame size as this Model 15, but this grip here is much much bigger. You can see why people change out the grips. Uh, it makes it easier to uh, hold, to get a hold of and control recoil, but that doesn't necessarily make you more accurate. So we'll talk about this grip. This grip for me is, um, it's a little difficult to shoot, but with some practice, it's not that bad. And I honestly prefer the look of wood on an older revolver like this. I just think it looks great. So with this grip here, it's easy to get up high on on this particular revolver you can see the shape of the handle just kinda lends itself to you getting up extremely high on it it almost just kinda fits like that in your palm this is the same thing you wanna make that U and you wanna make sure that revolver is right there in your palm now this grip is so small that my my uh, hand almost my fingers <laughs> rub, like reach around and touch my uh, other side of my hand so this is the same thing you know although with a revolver you want to keep your hands clear of this part this this part of the cylinder forward there's gonna be a lot of gas fire you know pressure shooting out of the cylinder here that's just normal for a revolver and sometimes there's gonna be some coming back out of this part here um, so you always want to kind of keep your hands clear of anywhere exposed around the cylinder here. Alright, so I don't know if you can see how this wood kind of sticks out here and it's rounded off on both sides. So what I typically do with this kind of style of grip is I make that U like I showed earlier with the semi-automatic and you get that in there and then I'm kind of pulling my thumb against this rounded piece to kind of pull the uh, the handle back into my palm. Now, I had seen that the FBI used to train, and I think law enforcement agencies used to train where you hold the revolver with this hand, and then you kind of grip it like this and put this thumb over it. Um, you can actually see some older gentlemen, not just men, you can actually see some older people uh, who actually shoot like this. This is a real common revolver grip because it was taught like this before where you kind of put your thumb overlapping here and another thing that does is it lets you pull the hammer back like that and not uh, change your actual 
strong hand grip instead of you know when you have this nice and high up and you got a good grip on it if you want to pull the hammer back you you have to release your thumb you know and kind of almost push the revolver out to get a good thumb pull on on the hammer so they were teaching it like that with their thumb over it like that and still gripping it down here it's kind of uncomfortable but you don't have to move your firing hands at all to pull the hammer back. Uh, I don't think they teach that anymore. The way that I hold this, this grip is a little bit of a challenge. Uh, like I said, I either like to hold it like that or I'll kind of rest my thumb in the cylinder release. And now it's easy to push that forward to uh, release that, but it's a long push. And it's got you know a nice little beveled out area. So I just kind of rest my thumb in there like that. This thumb, like I said, I keep forward. You know, if this were a pistol, I would have my thumbs like that. But since this is a revolver, I, you, you can't fire it like that. So uh, what I do is I usually rest this area of my thumb right there in that, like that. This thumb is not as forward as I would normally have it. It's a little back, and I kind of just drop it down, just like that. And then I squeeze the same way. There's no none of the uh, frame or grip exposed, like with the semi-automatic pistol. And I'm doing the same thing. I have a light but firm grip with my firing hand, and with my off hand, I'm actually pulling with my fingers back, and I'm pulling that grip into my palm. So I'm pulling it like that. I have my thumbs out of the way. And then I'm doing that that uh, trigger pull like I showed you before. Where the front sight does not move when I pull the trigger. And I'm pulling the trigger in that first knuckle. So on a small grip like that, that's how I hold this. And I can get some good, good shots off like that. Or... If I want to go to single action, I'll just bring this thumb up like this and cock it back. Um, basically, what you want to do is you don't want to move your, uh, you don't want to loosen your grip on your firing hand. Like I said, that's this small grip like this. It's a little bit of a challenge to shoot. It does take some practice, but with some practice, you can shoot it just fine. And you know, I really do prefer the look of the wood on these older style, style revolvers. Now if I got a revolver with a bigger grip, like my Model 15 here, same thing, I'm going to make that U and get up as high as I can. And this has some nice, you know, this is a nice wider grip. Uh, with this one, same thing, I'm going to rest my thumb in there, like I showed earlier. Just kind of rest my thumb in there. This thumb is going to drop down, I'm kind of just going to rest it there. Normally on a, on a pistol, I would have my thumb forward but like I mentioned earlier, you want to keep everything clear of this area of the cylinder, especially on an older one like this. I think, I don't know if you've seen, I'll annotate it, but the flash that comes out of this one right here. And I've seen some people put paper over this, and it just rips the paper to shreds. That flash is so powerful. So you want to keep all your fingers clear of that. So instead of having my thumb forward like on a pistol, I'll kind of have it back, and I'll rest it down in this area next to the trigger. But I'm doing the same thing. I'm pulling back with these fingers into into my palm and pushing forward with my with my right hand. And this is how my grip usually looks on this particular revolver. And when it's a double action, I'll shoot like that. If it's single action, with this one, since the grip is bigger, I, I just usually use my uh, my right thumb like that. And then since I have a nice index point for my right thumb. I'll do it like that. Pull it back like that. Index my thumb again and fire. That just works better for me. And like I said earlier, I'm pulling the trigger with that first knuckle crease. And it's just kind of a straight pull back. It's not making a round pull. It's more of a straight pull back. You really have to, uh, you really have to try it to see what I'm talking about. On a grip like this, Taurus has. This is a big, huge, wide grip, and it's got some nice finger grooves in it. Same thing, though. You're going to make that U, and you're going to get that as high up as you possibly can 
without getting some kind of hammer bite, you know. If you get up way too high, if you get some skin up there, that hammer is going to come up and pinch pinch the skin and you, you can see it's doing there and you're going to end up kind of hurting yourself or even cutting yourself open. But that's that's fundamental is making that you and putting the uh, the back of whatever handgun you have there and gripping it like that. Since this has some nice finger grooves, you get a nice positive grip on it and you get that trigger in that first crease. Same thing here, I rest my thumb on the uh, cylinder release button. This thumb goes down on this part of the frame here, and I'm doing the same thing here. I'm just holding it exactly like I hold all the other ones to fire, and then if I'm going to go single action, I'll, I'll just use this since this grip is so big. And it's nice to have like a little index point here. Keep my thumb indexed, pull it back, index my thumb again, pull the trigger. And I'm pulling the trigger in that first crease. And it's not a round pull like I mentioned earlier. It's just a straight back pull. I want to revisit this because now that I've said that, this grip is small. But I do have a nice index point, although it does kick my thumb way more forward since this grip is so small. But I think, now that I'm talking about it, I think... Yeah, it's kind of hard to make that stretch. See, this grip is so small, it's hard to make that stretch to pull that back. And I almost have to peel my hand off of it to do that. So I think the left hand is still the better. Um, my off hand is still better to pull the hammer back on something with a grip this small. So like I said earlier, I am by no means an expert. I'm not a trainer. I'm not certified to train. Um... I'm just telling you, if someone came up to me or if one of my friends asked me how I pull the trigger or how I shoot, or um, if they said, hey, you know, I'm having a hard time shooting. I'm having a hard time getting a good positive grip. What do you recommend? Uh, this is how I generally, this is the direction I'll steer, steer my friends or, um, you know, people at the range if they ask me if they see me or whatever. Um... Like I said, I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's what works for me, and ultimately you just have to use what works for you. But I hope that I brought up some points and some ideas that might help you uh, become a better shooter. Thanks for watching.